Burkina Faso's production of over 20,000 kilograms of gold in 2022 and even more in 2023 in EVE, which was sourced primarily by foreign companies, is representative of a recurring trend in which the country's vast natural resources, particularly gold, have been exploited by external entities. This exploitation, which goes beyond the reported figures, represents a historical pattern in which foreign gold mining corporations have profited disproportionately from Burkina Faso's resources, leaving the country with little benefit. This story dates back to Burkina Faso's independence, and it represents a continuing legacy of Western gold mining companies extracting significant wealth from the country's reserves without corresponding gains for its people. The recurring cycle of resource extraction and limited local returns highlights the systemic imbalance in reaping the benefits of Burkina Faso's natural wealth. It emphasizes the importance of increased scrutiny, equitable resource management, and policies that ensure a more equitable distribution of profits in order to support the nation's economic growth and development. That is why, despite being the 14th largest gold producer in the world, Burkina Faso is impoverished. Western countries with no gold mines, such as France, Italy, and the United Kingdom, have the most gold in their coffers. However, Ibrahim Traore has decided to put an end to this, announcing the cessation of all gold sales to the West. This sent shockwaves throughout the West, as its gold market was based primarily on gold from Burkina Faso. TR Media investigates disruptive frontiers and transformative initiatives. Whether you're a first-time viewer or looking for new perspectives on the ever-changing landscape of innovation and global impact, our content delves into the most recent breakthroughs and their global transformative effects. The shockwaves created by Ibrahim Chor's executive order prohibiting gold sales to the West prompted Western leaders to travel to various African countries, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visits to Ghana, Ethiopia, and Kenya, as well as Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's trip to Zambia. Even King Charles of England went to Africa to persuade other countries not to follow Chor's example. Burkina Faso, the 14th largest gold producer, produces an impressive 70,000 kilograms of gold, but much of it does not remain in the country, resulting in inadequate compensation for its people. European companies exploit Burkina Faso's minerals, exposing its youth to hazardous conditions in gold mines while profiting handsomely, leaving the Burkinade population impoverished, ranking 184th out of 191 in the Human Development Index. President Ibrahim Tror, on the other hand, has promised to remedy the situation. He wants to reclaim control of Burkina Faso's reserves and stop European companies from exploiting them. Despite taking power through a military coup, Tror is steadfast in correcting previous leaders' mistakes concerning the nation's natural resources and overall progress. He is committed to ending the exploitation of African laborers who risk their lives in dangerous mining operations for meager pay when selling gold locally. This gold is then exported to Western markets, benefiting others while ignoring local communities' needs. Tror is determined to put an end to this exploitation cycle once and for all. This is a systematic method of exploiting not only the minerals and precious metals of Burkina Faso, but also its workers. An evil system has been established that forces the people of Burkina Faso to mine gold for the benefit of Western powers. In exchange, they are paid in fractions, and the gold is present in the country from the moment it is mined. This is similar to what happened during slavery, when slaves did not receive the fruits of their labor. They were only given food, no matter how hard they worked or how much profit they brought their masters. The country is launching an EPIC initiative to reimagine domestic businesses, leveraging Burkina Faso's raw materials to promote local production and reduce reliance on imports. Ibrahim emphasized the paradox of having resources but lacking processing capabilities as a result of European power's historic efforts to keep the nation dependent. According to reports, there are discrepancies in Burkina Faso's reported gold output, indicating illegal practices by foreign companies smuggling gold to avoid paying royalties to the government. Millions of dollars in gold are illegally transported out of Africa each year primarily via the United Arab Emirates, to avoid taxes owed to African-producing countries. The vast quantities of unrecorded gold in African exports 
often leaving without corresponding taxes paid, point to a significant underground trade affecting countries such as Congo, where foreign-owned mines predominate. The intricate web of exploitation by foreign companies in African countries, particularly in gold and resource-rich regions such as the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, precludes state officials from directly participating in smuggling activities. In his book, The Looting Machine, investigative journalist Tom Burgess meticulously uncovers a pattern of enormous wealth, rampant violence, and severe poverty in several African countries, most notably the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He attributes the origins of this pattern to colonial-era practices that perpetuated wholesale resource expropriation, a legacy that continues into the post-independence era with new beneficiaries. Burgess emphasizes the intertwining of political and commercial power, a relic of colonial manipulation that resulted in the formation of an elite class with unchecked authority and corruption. He emphasizes multinational corporations' enduring influence in African nations, ranging from colonial exploitation to modern-day forms of exploitation. As exemplified by Angola's heavy reliance on oil revenue, marked by disappearing funds and the government's servitude to the elite, these foreign entities frequently benefit disproportionately from resource revenue, fostering corruption and oppression within these countries. Burgess also exposes the exploitation facilitated by offshore banking, as exemplified by figures such as Dan Gertler, who amassed enormous wealth from resource monopolies while avoiding transparency and accountability by establishing connections and utilizing offshore networks. Burkina Faso has taken proactive steps to strengthen its hold on gold royalties and curb smuggling practices in response to concerns about disproportionately low royalty rates and tax negotiations in natural resource contracts. Allegations of tax evasion and illegal smuggling by Western gold mining companies persist, depriving African nations of critical revenue for public services and infrastructure development. Transparency issues also plague foreign mining operations, making it difficult to assess the value of extracted gold and compensate host countries fairly. Because of asymmetry in expertise and bargaining power, the negotiation dynamics between foreign mining companies and host nations are frequently lopsided, favoring mining firms. Transfer pricing issues arise when companies manipulate prices within their corporate structures in order to reduce tax liabilities. In response, Burkina Faso's captain Ibrahim Tror plans to establish a gold refinery and a centralized mining oversight company in order to limit illicit gold transfers. His recent ban on gold sales to the West may increase demand in Western markets, potentially driving up gold prices and putting Burkina Faso in a strategic negotiating position. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.